So the get request works perfectly, right? But then think about this. If you remember your re your rest with Jersey, we have we have specified the annotation which is at at uh, at get, right? Here we can mention that in the in the method itself, you can specify a comma here. You can say method and that get or you can simply use at the rate get mapping. So when you say get mapping, it means you are using a get request. You can also use post mapping, put mapping and delete mapping for other thing. Again, we'll see that once we continue with the videos. In this video, we are the most important part is uh, the database connections. Now think about this. If you want to work with database because I want to fetch all this data here from database. So of course we have to uh, we have to connect with database, we have to create a re repository, right? So we have to say alien repository, right? And we have to specify all this thing. Example, we have to specify all these properties. And of course, somewhere we have to specify all these properties uh, where you have, you have to mention your URL, your username, password, the, the URL. And you have to mention these methods. We need a method to, f to, to find all the aliens, you have to, write, you have to mention the entire stuff here. You have to mention the entire, uh, this entire code right for one alien you want the entire code for create alien this is the code for delete alien you have a code right for, for, for everything we have a code there but what if I say you have a easier way now how do I implement that now first of all I'm not using normal JDBC here of course we'll be using JDBC but then we will be using a layer of it which is called as a spring ORM now we also have a concept of JPA. Again, if you're not familiar with JPA concept, I would recommend you to learn about that as well. I do have a Hibernate playlist. If you if you follow the, follow that playlist, you will understand how exactly JPA works or how exactly Hibernate works. Again, you will find that in the description area. But even if you don't know, that's fine. I will. Uh, we can ignore that internal part of it. We can understand the overall structure. What is happening? What I will do here is first of all, I will add a JPA support in this project. And as you can see in my Palm Excel file, I don't have a JPA support. So we have to add a JPA support. How do I get that? How do I get a Spring JPA support? For that, you have to go to Maven repository and search for Spring Boot. Oh, what's that? Spring Boot JPA. Now, if you search for Spring Boot JPA, your, your first result in this, you have to make sure that you're selecting 1.5.4 because that's our project version, if you see. That's the project uh, Spring Boot version we are working with. So let's use 1.5.4, copy that, and paste in your dependencies. Now you got a Spring Boot JPA support. Now once you have added that, and the moment you run this project, even if you are not changing any stuff, we have just added dependency, right? Let's try to run this code. Let's say run as uh, Spring, or oh, we'll restart the application. The moment you restart the application, you will get an error. Okay, before solving that error, I want to tell you one more thing. Let, let's say if you want to create a project and you're sure that the, you, you will be building a project which will be having a REST and JPA both. So while, the, while you're getting the project, at that time itself, you can mention that you want to work with JPA. So you don't have to manually add this dependency. Again, uh, we can, it's very easy. You can just right click here and say new spring startup project and you can mention it the default stuff here you can mention i want a web stuff so you can mention web and you can mention jpa so you don't have to manually uh, manually do the uh, manually add a dependency but let's say we have added this dependency right anyhow but what is this error now it says cannot determine the embedded driver class for database type none what what is this error now what is what happens you know your spring boot project is very intelligent or you can say very smart it says hey programmer i can see that you have added this spring jpa dependency but you have not specified the properties oh spring understand other things so what you have to do now is you have to specify those properties here but which property you have to mention now what are the settings we have to do here so it's very easy actually you can mention url and it will give you a list here right and inside this list you have to be you have to select spring dot data source dot url because we are using a data source concept here and in this we'll mention jdbc colon mysql colon double slash localhost the same uh, the same property you have to mention in normal jdbc right 
simulation 2306 slash the database name. I forgot database name which we are working with. So if I go to my alien repository, uh, the database is REST DB, right? Let's use the same thing. We'll say REST DB. The next thing you have to mention is username. So I will say spring dot data source dot username. We'll mention the username as root. And I will say again spring dot data source dot password. I will mention the password as zero. And the last thing is the driver class. We'll say spring dot the same property you have to mention in any JDBC. Okay, you don't there's nothing new. We'll say spring data source dot it is driver dot driver hyphen class hyphen name. You didn't have to buy hard this thing. Okay, it will be pop up. It will pop up automatically. So we'll say com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver, right? So we have specified all these properties when you worked with alien repository here. The same stuff. You see that the same stuff. And that's it. Our job is done. I think let's restart the application. Again, this will not be fetching from database, but at least the application should work. Oh, we got an error now. It says it is not able to find com.mysql.jdc driver because we forgot to add MySQL dependency. Let's add that as well. Let's go to my own repository here and let's say, hey, I want a MySQL connector. In fact, you don't even have to do this. Uh, if you know that you are working with uh, Spring Boot, JPA, Web and MySQL, while creating the project, you can also search for MySQL, it will give you the dependency. But since we have not done that there, let's do it manually here. I will say I want I want 39 version, which is 4.3.9. Again, you can go with any version which you love. Okay, we have added the MySQL dependency as well. Let's, re let's restart the application now. It should work. And you can see there's no error, right? There's no error now. But again, it will not work from database because we are not fetching from database. How do I do that here? So in this project, if you want to make it work with database, you have to go to your package and say, hey, I want to create a new class. Now, what if I say you don't have to get a class, you have to get an interface. You might be thinking, okay, we have to first get the interface, then we have to get a class and then we'll implement. Uh, let's see how it works. We'll say alien repository. Okay. And we just have to extend or we'll click on finish. We got the interface here, right? We just have to extend with one of the one of the internal one of the internal interface called as code repository, where you have to mention whatever class you're working with and the primary key, whatever primary key you're working with. So I'm working with a primary key integer. Now in your MySQL database, you have a primary key which is uh, this is not our table. Let's use rest db. Let's verify what you're working with and select star from alien. Okay, so this is our data, right? Now this is your primary key, which is integer. So we have to specify integer here. And now you might be thinking, okay, we have to define all the methods here, create, uh, get, update and delete. And then we have to get one more class, which will implement in this interface, right? That's how Java works. But what if I say, you don't have to do any of this stuff. Let's keep this interface empty and let's not create any other class. And in here, in this resources, we have to create object of alien repository. We'll say alien repository and we'll say repo. That's it. And here we'll simply write at auto wired. Now this is a spring core feature. If you want object, you don't have to create the object by saying new or alien repository. You can simply write at auto wired. It will search for the implementation. It will give you the object. You don't have to worry about this. And here, let's not create the object by ourselves. Simply say the data will be coming from the repo. We'll say repo dot repo dot uh, find all. So we have to use internal method which is find all. Okay, this works. Okay, so we can typecast it. Uh, if it if it will not work, well, let's change something. Let's let's run, let's run this code. Let's see what happens. The moment you run this code, you can see I'm using a repo now. And oh, we got an error. Oh, it says it is not a managed bin. Uh, if you're using database, we have to also make sure that this is an entity because we are using a concept of hibernate. And in hibernate, we have to mention this as at entity. And in not just hibernate, we're talking about in general JPA, right? So in JPA, we have to mention at entity and at ID. So at ID will give you, at ID will make this as a primary key and this class as an entity class. 
Okay, so we are learning from errors now. Let's go back to our postman and let's say, hey postman, fetch the data and you can see that we are getting all this data and these things are coming from database, right? So that's how this, that's how this stuff works here. You just have to say find all, just typecast it with, with list and everything will work fine. You don't have to use any table stuff. Everything will work fine, right? Awesome thing, right? So this is how you use a Spring REST with database with the help of JPA. So let me recap what is happening here. The magic thing here is we are not getting any class which implements this interface and it still works, right? So this thing is done by Spring for you. Now, there are lots of people they say, hey, Spring is not that good. Now, what is this? Spring is awesome. Spring is not good, it is awesome, right? It will give you all those extra features which, which you need, right? So that's the magic of Spring Boot. Again, we'll, we'll, once we continue with the example in the next videos, we'll, you will get more idea about it. But I would recommend you that before going for the next video, do practice this because this is something which you will understand only when you do it because it's the magic, right? And magic, when I show the magic, you will be thinking, oh, this is awesome. But the real thing you will understand when you try it by yourself. So try it by yourself, then you will see the actual, uh, then you will understand the actual stuff. In the next video, we'll see the other methods.